Nick and I are going to be putting in uh, a new timing chain in a Kawasaki 400 Bayou. This chain right here, if you notice, we've got them even here. If you look at the play right here, this is the reason that we're having to replace this old timing chain that's on this side. It's because this old timing chain is extremely flimsy. So if you pick it up, you can see how it does the whole little whoopee. And then this one right here, it don't quite do that. It'll stand up straight. Um, so it don't have as much, it don't have no wear on it. It's brand new. So we'll uh, go over here to the four wheeler and I'll start showing you backwards since we've already taken it apart on how to put it back together. So here we are over here at uh, old Kawasaki 400 Bayou. Show you how to do a timing chain in it. Um, you see how the new timing chain guides that we've already put in it. And uh, so today we're gonna put in a new timing chain. That way uh, we can get this thing timed and, and hopefully we'll show you how to do all this and get it back together. I should have took a video of it, taking it apart, which is pretty simple. So uh, this will get started. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to have to get you one of these tools right here. And what it does is whenever you push that, it'll come out and bite it. Um, I have done this before and only used a piece of wire so that you can drop it down in this hole here. And as it goes down, it pops out down here. You can take this timing chain, slide it around the gears here. And then you can push this puppy. Push this puppy out like this and bite that timing chain. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to pull that timing chain right on up in there. Uh, a lot of people say this is something that you can't do at home. You need to get a uh, dealership to do it. This is, It's actually pretty easy to take care of. Um, and And once you get that bottom on, so there is a little brace right there that, uh, and what that does is that keeps if that chain when it gets wore out or if it comes when it comes off or when it's got a little bit of chain slap so it doesn't come down here and break this little gear right here um, in the process. So, so once you get that on, uh, then you're just going to pull the timing chain up. Get it up here at the top. We can go ahead and take that off. We've already got our cam in right here. Um, we could actually pull this cam out and go ahead. That mark right here, you'll see a little bit later on, that mark right there actually has to be lined up just like so, right even with the top of this uh valve box right here and that that's where you're going to want top dead center now the marks are on the other side of the four wheeler for everything else so we'll um we'll time it after we get this whole thing back together though uh, i don't know maybe not maybe maybe we'll go ahead and time it so we decided to go ahead and time it um what I've got here is a three quarter inch socket and a uh, three inch drive ratchet. If you look up in that hole right there, you should be able to see that's mark one. Mark two, if you see that T, that's where we want it at right there. That's where top dead center is. And uh, that's where we want to be timing from. Uh, now we'll go over to the other side and we'll time out the cam. So now we're on the right side again, over here with the timing chain and we've got it pulled up in here. Uh, so we're gonna get this timing chain worked down and around on here. And then we're gonna go ahead and set this cam to where that both lobes on this cam should be pointing down when you do this. And if you do it the way I am, you should be able to get 
that chain. I like to get it locked here. But then once I get it locked, I come over here and I take a three inch drive extension and I'll pull that chain, I push it kind of tight. And what that does is that allows me to look at this mark because that's pretty much once the tensioner gets on it, that's where it's going to take it to um, for the most part. Um, and I, and, and I'm, I feel pretty good about it. So now we're going to take our So now what we're going to do is go ahead and run the time and chain gear off. get it on there and like I said we've got the other side is on top dead center for the crank so now we need to get our cam gear on top dead center Everybody does this process a little bit different. Some people do it um, the same as others. It doesn't really matter to me how you do it. As long as when you're done, looks like we may need to possibly I need to go one more link. Around. And then what I'll do is go ahead and start one of these puppies right here. So it'll hold it in place. Three drive extension, push it down in here where it's going to be tight by the tensioner. And now I'm going to shine a little bit of light, see how that mark there is flat with the top of that that's what you want for it to be on top dead center and in time so now that we've got it in time pause it. so at this point <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and put our tensioner in uh, just because i want to be done with it so what i do is i back this puppy right here out Pull that long spring out right there. What that does is enables you to take this, flip it, and push that back. Once you get it pushed back, take it and slide it right up in here. That's where it goes. That way, uh, We can uh, 
ahead and make sure that we're good to go with that. Now, now we we'll do that. So right here, I don't know, can you see that right there? There's a little card key right there. Um, you want to get that locked in. That way this little gear right here, you notice how it's got a washer on this side. That's the side that comes out towards you. You can slide that washer off so that you can see where to line that gear up at. And slide it up on there. Get lined up on that car key. And you do what I just did, where you knock that car key off. Now, give me just a second and let me get that car key out of there. So, where we were, where the washer goes on the outside. So, what you want to do. This little Carter key we dropped just now, it actually fell down in behind here. And what I did is I took the little screwdriver, stuck it in there, and just run it right around until it came back up to right there in order to get that Carter key out. So now I'm just gonna slide that gear on. I'm gonna take my little screwdriver and kind of hold that key so we don't drop it again. Um, yeah, let me see if I can. Get it right there. So now that's on. And what that does is that gear right there turns that puppy. Um, so everything's pretty much wrapped up there. And then your washer goes on. That's right. This gear right here, slide it on, no particular way it goes. Make sure it's on there. Now once you get that on there, um, that your your next step is your clutch pack. Um, this gear right here rides here. That's what runs it. So no timing necessary on it either. So you're just gonna move. the other one moves a little bit. So we're just gonna nudge it up on there something don't something don't feel right to me about this clutch pack it's almost like it look at that space so you clutch pack and it's gonna ride out a little bit like that I determined um so all we're going to do, line it up. Eh. So, take clutch pack. So there it is. Um, once you get that on there, then nut. And that little nut right on up there. It's pretty rough to try to get this off without air air in. Um, 
put it pretty tight. It ain't going nowhere. I can pretty much assure you on that one. Um, once you get that in, right there, clutch. Part of your clutch. Got these four springs. Slide them puppies right there. Start every one of them by hand. You will try to, you can take a socket and an extension if you need to, because it does get a little bit slippery. Um, once you get them all started by hand, pretty good, couple of threads. Then I go for the trusty impact. So what you gotta do is be very mindful you can just pull up each one a little bit at a time. And fill the stop. I'm going to stagger them. That's a star pattern. I will stop with the impact. I'll turn it on low and give it a maybe. Number two. Just enough to lock it in there. Then I'll come back. Once I get everything kind of locked down, I'll come back and tighten it up a little better. Right there is your automatic shifter. Um, Got to make sure it's in the right place. And the best way to do that is just make sure it's in the center of these two bolts here. Um, pointing to the center of here. Center of the shaft is what you want. Uh, it's the plate over here that covers the cover. Actually has a shift fork here that shifts it out. Um, so with that being said, that just slides up on there. You got a little thrust washer right here. That thrust washer likes to come off whenever you bring the case off, so you gotta kinda keep an eye out for it. Um, keeps it from wearing. It's here. This, I'm gonna slide this right up on here. Well, I said you're gonna slide it right up on there. These splines and these splines have to be splines here and here. So whenever you put it back together, you gotta reach back here. And you need to reach back here. You can grab your clutch here, get them lined up. They'll slide right on there. Um, once you get this on there. You got your washer. Nut.
So then, a little bit of mojo with the air right again. Got everything buttoned up pretty good. Um, with that, so everything is pretty much right over where it needs to be. The timing's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin that. Get our last screw in here. Now, timing chain is pretty much done. Only thing to do now, just kind of going around this chicken to see how much of the gasket come apart. Looks like a little bit did. So we're gonna a second, clean everything up, and then um, we're gonna when we come back uh, after just a second, we're gonna have it all cleaned up and we're gonna slide the case cover back up on there and put the bolts on it and try to hopefully here in a few minutes get this thing started up. So at this point, <clears throat> we've got our cover back on. We just cleaned it up. You can see the little bit of glue uh, gasket maker after we got it cleaned up, put on it. And um, now all it is is the enjoyable work going around it, putting all these screws in, getting them tightened up, and snugged up, and ready to go. So, so you all probably don't want to watch this, so. We'll, uh, we'll pause for a minute and come back and we'll get that part done. So we got all of our bolts tightened up on our cover plate. Um, the only thing left to do now is to go ahead and put our rocker box back on. It'll, we're not going to do that right now. We'll uh, go ahead and do that uh, tomorrow evening. And uh, hopefully then the weather holds off and we'll give her a test ride. <laughs> 